good afternoon to the veterinarian from the different region in the world. You are welcome to Sri Lanka Veterinary Association, second international web series. We have organized 16 webinars at the second SLU international webinar series. Our research persons are well reputed veterinarian in Sri Lanka. Today our topic is health and reproductive management of large scale dairies in Sri Lanka. Our resource person, Dr. Arundi Renapana from National Livestock Development Board of Sri Lanka. Without wasting much time, I would like to invite Dr. Susanta Malavarati, the president of Sri Lanka Veterinary Association, to welcome you all. Dear President, over to you. Thank you, Dr. Sugatta, our former secretary of SLVA. And uh, very good afternoon uh, on behalf of Sri Lanka Veterinary Association. I am uh, very happy to welcome you all as the president of Sri Lanka Veterinary Association for this fifth session of the international seminar series. And uh, earlier, fourth session were on uh, pet animals. Now, we are going to start the large animal session. And this is uh, uh, on health and reproductive management of uh, large scale dairies in Sri Lanka. And uh, it is uh, uh, to be conducted by Dr. Arundi Ranapana. And I'm very happy that she is uh, practically enrolling in dairy. So you may get a lot of uh, updated knowledge uh, through her presentation. And uh, today, our moderator is Dr. Tilak Pirasinga. He is an eminent scientist and a researcher, and he will uh, coordinate the session. And uh, also, I must welcome all the uh, veterinary doctors who are joining from outside Sri Lanka. And we'll come to this session because uh, we know that especially Indian Veterinary Association uh, members also always joining with us uh, for this session. And I am happy that uh, it is a very good initiative because we are uh, conducting international sessions. So international sessions are also open for everyone. So I really welcome everyone and especially thanks to our members of Sri Lanka Veterinary Association for joining uh, on this uh, holiday. And I take this opportunity to wish a very happy birthday to our secretary, Dr. Tamari Kannangara in advance, because her birthday is tomorrow. So we'll wish her a happy birthday today, because we are not having a session tomorrow. So uh, with that, I hand over the session to secretary uh, uh, of Sri Lanka Veterinary Association to introduce our moderator, and then the moderator will take over the session uh, and we'll con continue the session. Thank you. Over to you, Dr. Chamari. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank, thank you, you very much for um, advanced wishes, birthday wishes. Uh, next, uh, I would like to invite uh, today's moderator, Dr. T uh, Tilak uh, Virasinghe, to conduct today's webinar. Uh, over to you, Dr. Virasinghe. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Chamari. Uh, I think you all can hear me. Uh, thank you very much for, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. President and the co SLVA to invite me for this one. And of course, uh, my duty is to introduce Dr. Arundi. Uh, you all know her very well, but uh, still I have, uh, it's, a, it's a customary to introduce her. Now, Dr. Arundi graduated from uh, the Faculty of Veterinary Medicine of the University of Peradin in 2013, and then she completed her MSc at the PGIA in 2018. She joined NLDB as a veterinary surgeon in uh, 2015. There she worked for nearly five years. Uh, at Ridhiyagama NLDB farm, which is uh, one of the largest dairy farms in the South Asian region, as well as uh, uh, one of the very modern and uh, uh, largest farms uh, practicing all, most of the modern dairy practices. So in 2020, she moved to upcountry uh, NLDB farms uh, and now Currently, she is serving for the Manik Palama Bopatala Diagamam Rosita Farms. So, I think uh, summarizing all, uh, Dr. Arundi has vast experience in 
large animal health and management as well as reproductive aspect which is in utter or urgent need at the moment for the country because we are in a uh, very high drive of improving or increasing milk production in the country so therefore i have no doubt that her presentation will immensely help immensely help our uh, our field veterinarians uh, and the graduates uh, researchers or whoever working closely with the dairy industry in the country so before i hand over to dr arundhi uh, uh, as i know this would be about 45 to 1 hour presentation and then uh, it will be followed by about 15 to 20 minutes uh, discussion if you have any question so that uh, brief introduction uh, 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 is a privilege to actually introduce dr arundhi and uh, over to you thank you thank you very much dr tilak uh, that uh, now we start the presentation and i'm going to share the screen with you and first of all good afternoon all of you uh, i hope now it is clear that uh, is it okay that my screen can you see it and can yes, you yes. hear me yes okay Okay, thank you. Yeah, okay. Uh, today, that uh, my topic is health and reproductive management of uh, large scale areas in Sri Lanka. Uh, Now, uh, okay, uh, the, the, this is the overview of my pr presentation. And I'm going to, uh, first of all, I'm going to talk about common management goals in dairy in briefly. Uh, as an introduction to my main presentation. Then I'm going to talk about the healthcare management. Under the healthcare management, uh, disease prevention and control, and the treatments. Then I'm going to talk about the reproductive management and the challenges in large-scale dairy management uh, in Sri Lanka. So first, uh, as an inter introduction part, uh, large-scale dairies in Sri Lanka, Normally, there is no special definition, but uh, according to the dairy sizes, depending on the management system, location and the other, there are three main dairy types. As small scale dairies, that means less than 10 animals, and medium scale dairies, around 10 to 100 animals, and large scale dairies, more than 100 animals. When we talk about the large scale dairies in Sri Lanka, it is an emerging business, and a governmental organization like NLDB and also the private organizations uh, join in uh, with this business as large scale areas in Sri Lanka. And then, uh, in shortly, I'm going to talk about the cattle management stage, stages. Like, uh, we have mainly calf management, heifer management, and uh, cow management. Then, uh, this that I'm, uh, I'm going uh, this uh, calf management goals. Then, the main target of targets in calf management. Uh, mainly, depending on the uh, breed, we need to achieve uh, the birth weight sufficiently and then the weaning weight, it should be double the birth weight and uh, at the time of the weaning, uh, it should be approximately at two months of the age and weight gain should be 500 to 100 grams per day, it, it also depending on the breed. And the breeding weight is uh, two third of the mature body weight. That means 66% of the mature body weight. And the, uh, uh, breeding age is uh, ideally from 14 months of age. And uh, at this age, body weight should be around uh, 275 kilograms in jersey breed and uh, 300 kilograms in uh, jersey breed and process. 
at about uh, 325 kilograms in Frisian reed. And then, the, uh, then when we talk about the heifer management goals, 14 months of age and uh, steam up should be done before calving and optimal other development before calving and the age of age at first calving should be around 24 months and after calving uh, healthy and there should be a healthy and productive cow and then uh, this these are the cow management goal goals in uh, fresh cows that means uh, that cows which have cowed recently uh, we we need uh, the healthy cow without uterine and metabolic diseases and also uh, the cow need to manage the negative energy balance and push, push into peak production by 30 days after calving and return into estrus uh, and also optimum quality milk production and in high yielders uh, we should maintain the peak production uh, for three to five months and get in them uh, getting them pregnant uh, as soon as possible and calve into conception interval should be average 90 days and uh, uh, regaining body reserves, uh, maintaining 3.5 uh, body content score. And when we talk about the dairy management, there, there are a lot of management, uh, uh, management practices we should follow. That is uh, housing management, feeding management, healthcare management, reproduction management, making management data, and uh, other things also. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about the healthcare management and the reproduction management. So, uh, first part healthcare management in large scale dairies in Sri Lanka. So, uh, when we talk about the healthcare management, there are, uh, the, as the common healthcare problems, uh, we can uh, say that. Uh, like conditions like mastitis, lameness, diarrhea, pneumonia, and uh, navel ill, joint ill, and also traumatic reticular. Uh, ERP like conditions that means traumatic metritis like cases, LDRDA, metabolic diseases, uh, FMD, LSD like conditions, and uh, like uh, so. Uh, we can say the condition like that as the common healthcare problems. So mainly, uh, we have two aspects of healthcare management in the large scale areas. This is uh, first one is disease prevention and control. This is the top priority. And then uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, disease prevention and control. Uh, there are so many management practices we are practicing to, uh, to uh, for disease prevention and control. Uh, these are some of them, like vaccination, deworming, uh, newborn calf care, dry cow management, uh, things and shed cleaning, waste disposal, and beddings. Uh, so on that I am going to, uh, I, next slides I am going to show you the detailed description about uh, these aspects. So uh, without wasting time, I, I'm going to next slide. And this is the uh, this is about the vaccination that I'm going to talk about the uh, vaccination programs that we followed in NLDB, NLDB large scale dairy farms. Mainly uh, we are doing FMD vaccination uh, for as it is as a biannual vaccination. Then uh, vaccination against lumpy skin disease. This is also an annual vaccination. Uh, we recorded LSD cases in NLDB on uh, 2021. So we started the LSD vaccination in NLDB on 2021. Uh, this, these photographs are related to the uh, LSD condition reported in the Manic Palme NLDB farm. And uh, then I'm going to the next slide. Uh, we also vaccinating against Salmonella Dublin and Rota Corona. Uh, this, this both vaccines are given to the steam up group cows. The, so the immunity transfer to the calf uh, through the cholesterol. So cholesterol feeding is essential to develop the immunity in cows uh, on uh, Salmonella Dublin and uh, Rota Corona. Then also we are vaccinating against uh, respiratory disease uh, complex. It uh, trade name is Boifast RSP vaccine. Uh, this vaccination is also doing for the calves against uh, respiratory disease complex. Uh, we are doing it as a two dose vaccination, primary and booster dose on 14 days and 49 days of age. 
and uh, also we are doing BVD vaccination. It is an annual herd vaccination and also tick fever vaccination. This is the vaccination of cows at four months of age. This is one single vaccination. And also for the mas uh, mastitis, uh, against mastitis, vaccination of milking cows against some major mastitis causing agent. Uh, this is also by annual vaccination. And then uh, this is a photograph at uh, review of the milking cows after milking the, that uh, we did on Ridhiyagam. And also we are doing deworming. And normally uh, we are taking the weight gain, we are measuring the weight gain of the cows. So monthly uh, we measure the body weight of the cows. At that time we are doing the deworming. And uh, normally monthly deworming doing on the uh, cows. Uh, this is uh, deworming starting after weaning. That means at the two months of age and it is uh, continue up to breeding. And at the breeding means at 14 months of age. This deworming of cows, independence of having worm infestation. And uh, we are also using rotational, uh, rota rotational using of deworming drugs. Uh, the, that is to prevent the resistance. And uh, examples as albendazole, levimazole, and ivermectin. And for the adults animal, uh, if there is any indication with the requirement, uh, we are doing uh, deworming on adult animal. Then uh, after care of newborn cows, this is uh, mainly just after birth, it should be done, naval treatment should be done with thin tidy. And then, uh, then uh, vein of the calf and uh, other record keeping things. Also then the cholesterol feeding. This is, uh, this is done by uh, doing uh, calf feeding back and uh, directly, to the, directly to the rumen. Uh, uh, by tubing and uh, then also ear tagging for identification and uh, after that we transfer the calf to individual calf box in the calf unit. Then uh, this is a, a photograph of the feeding bag that we are using. Uh, the, this is using for the initial cholesterol feeding that uh, from uh, by using this bag, we, we can ensure the amount of the cholesterol that uh, we feed and uh, we can assure the cholesterol feeding to the calf. And uh, then uh, this cholesterol feeding should be started within half an hour after birth and she, it should be continued for around uh, three days. And uh, milking of the cholesterol cows. That means up to three to five days after calving, this is done separately. And all the cholesterol transported to the calf unit to feed the cows, uh, that feed the cholesterol feeding cows. This cholesterol mainly, as you all know, it helps to have, because we vaccinated again the mother cows against rota corona and uh, rota virus, coronavirus and salmonella doubly. And uh, this immunity transfer to the cows through the through this cholesterol. So then, uh, it is also dry cow management is also playing a ma major role in the uh, disease prevention and control. Ideally, dry cows should be pregnant. That means uh, should be more than uh, uh, two hundred twenty days pregnant. But in the practical situation, uh, it is not like that. In dry herd, there may be also some non-pregnant animals. Uh, mainly that we have steam up group cows, that means pregnant more than 250 days. Uh, these animals are prepare, preparing for next lactation. They should be fed, uh, fed with uh, the good, good ration and close observation for calving signs. Vaccination also we are doing. And uh, body condition should be around four. And then uh, then I'm going to that in under disease prevention and control that uh, very important part, this is shed clean, cleaning and waste disposal. Uh, this is very important to uh, prevention and control of the diseases. Normally what we are practicing is twice a day cleaning in the morning and the evening at the time of milking, mainly that uh, we are doing milking uh, two times per day. So at the time of milking, 
uh, shed cleaning also. Uh, we are doing shed cleaning also. And uh, first, first part is the cleaning lying area, then the cleaning of the flushing area. So for the cleaning of the lying area, what we are using is normally manually uh, by using a labor, we can clean in the lying area. Then for the cleaning of the flushing area, we can use tractors for cleaning, like as in upcountry NLDB farms, or as in Ridhiagam NLD farm, we can use mechanical system like uh, using vacuum pressure. So uh, this is a uh, modern method and this is very easy and low labor usage, labor us usage is very low in this method. And this is the uh, shed cleaning way in the Ridhiagam NLDB farm that you can see here that heavy flow of water uh, coming uh, coming from from here and uh, it is passing through passing through the uh, flushing alley in the shed. So uh, uh, that in with the, this water flow and uh, then uh, after all total uh, total shed is clean. So uh, this is the this is very modern method and very easy and also labor usage is very minimum and uh, then uh, the, at the shed cleaning time other other than the uh, lying area flushing alley and also we we need to clean the feeding alleys and uh, need to remove all the push out push outs means the remaining feed in the feeding alley be, uh, that before put in new feed, we need to clean the feeding alleys also. The, this is important to pre prevent the microbial growth in the feed. And uh, sometimes that fungal and bacterial growth in the feed material are harmful to the animals and it can cause abortions, poisoning, and sometimes death also can be caused by this. And then, uh, then this is the, uh, this picture is taken uh, in the waste disposal system in the Ridhiagam NLDB farm. Uh, in the uh, that right corner picture that you can see here that uh, these are the uh, that main cattle sheds so uh, that uh, the, these sheds are clean as uh, by using uh, water by using the vacuum pressure after cleaning this uh, these sheds the all the waste materials are collected to the uh, that waste collecting tanks nearby. So the, these are the close pitch of that uh, waste collecting tank. You can see that inside uh, wastewater after collect that waste, waste water is collected in here. Uh, inside the sediment is uh, that uh, that that means that uh, sedimentation happen in the inside and also water is uh, here that uh, Water is coming to the outside, then, then this water collected to the uh, nearby water collecting tanks. So, uh, after further sedimentation, we can use this water as uh, we can reuse this water for only for the shed cleaning purpose. And also, the sediment is using as uh, that manure in the field. Uh, and this is the uh, that waste disposal system in the Ridhiagama farm. So then next thing is the that main things in main part in disease prevention bedding for lying area. So uh, normally uh, in the lying area rubber mattresses rubber mattresses are using, and uh, this is uh, helpful to prevent pressure abscesses in the animals. So we can see in this uh, photograph that. Uh, that abscess caused by uh, that pressure abscess in here. And uh, if some abscess uh, occur in the joints, it is very uh, difficult to cure, like uh, in knee joint and stifle joint. If there is any abscess like condition, it is very difficult to cure because the that joint parts are always moving parts. And uh, that ultimate result is uh, the result will be the down of how. And uh, prevention of these pressure abscesses, uh, pressure abscesses are very important thing. And uh, uh, furthermore, to uh, well, that furthermore, we are applying 
a thick layer of sawdust uh, applied on the rubber mattress. And main purpose of using this sawdust is uh, prevent pressure abscesses on the animal. And also it helpful to prevent mastitis. But it is recommended to apply a thick layer of sawdust as bedding and uh, between the bed and the animal and the provide a comfort. And uh, this is also helpful to reduce mastitis too. But this sawdust uh, that uh, it is a must that this sawdust layer should be removed and replaced daily. Otherwise, the uh, otherwise this is also can cause uh, another another agent act as uh, uh, another agent for the disease if it is unclean and uh, it it if it is not uh, changed daily. And uh, the sawdust layer it is also facilitates facilitate cleaning in the lying area. And then the next part is we are doing some lime powder application. This is once a week application of lime powder in the sheds and bedding. This is also helpful to reduce mastitis and also disinfect the sheds. Also, uh, it clean the sheds and pre prevents slippery flow. Uh, uh, and uh, traumatic injuries due to the due to slippery flow. Then uh, another important thing we, we are doing is Ruben magnet application. This is helpful, helpful to prevent uh, TRP and other complication happen with that. And uh, TRP is happened by punching the sharp object from the reticulum to the heart to diaphragm. And uh, this magnet can be uh, applied to the hepas around year of age and using Ruben magnet applicator. This is in once in lifetime application then the magnet is remain in the reticulum. So this is the uh, picture of Roman magnet application that we did in uh, the Ridhiagama farm. Uh, you can see this is the magnet applicator. And uh, in next picture, uh, this is the magnet applicator and this is the Roman magnet. Then uh, this is, uh, these pictures are downloaded from the internet actually. And uh, this, uh, this picture is related to the that uh, taken from how after post mortem. So uh, then also we, uh, we for the disease prevention and control, uh, making parlor procedures plays very important role. Also, it is the in Sri Lanka so far that uh, hair, there are herring bone parlors and rapid exit parlors are available in large scale dairies. Uh, normally, we are practicing strip cup test before each milking for detect clinical mastitis and also routine CMT testing to detect subclinical mastitis. And also uh, the in the milking parlors and to detect subclinical mastitis cases, they are conductivity alarms and we can take separate reports from the data system, uh, which animals are having the uh, having high conductivity in the milk. And also the uh, that CIP cleaning system for the cleaning. And uh, before milking, uh, we are practicing pre-dipping by using commercially available pre-dipping solutions. And after milking is completed post-dipping, and it is also by the commercially available uh, positive solution. Then this is this picture is related to the uh, milking parlor in Diagram and LDB farm. This is a 12 to herringbone parlor. And uh, this picture is related to the milking parlor in Ridhiagam and LDB farm. This is 24 to front exit parallel parlor. And uh, in Ridhiagam, uh, we have two parlors of uh, two, two parlors like this. One is for jerseys and one is for the uh, jersey fish and coast animals. So uh, in, uh, in one time, we can milk uh, 90, 96 animals. Then also uh, we are doing routine blood sample analysis, dung, dung sample analysis and milk sample analysis, uh, routine test to detect any important disease and the, for the prebalance in the, we are uh, checking blood samples for check blood parasite, fecal samples for uh, EPG and detection of worm species, and also the serum samples for detecting, uh, detection of metabolic conditions, deficiencies like things, and milk sample 
for culture and isolation of mastitis causing agent. And also, uh, we also use in some uh, test, kits, test kits for uh, disease identification. Uh, these are the two test, test kits that uh, we used for identify rotavirus and coronavirus. This picture is related to that. And uh, the next, uh, next one is we are normally practicing routine postnatal checkups. And this is uh, helpful to prevent uh, ROP cases, metritis and endometritis cases. And uh, this is also important to improve the reproduction parameters in the farm. Normally, uh, postnatal checkups at the three days after calving, seven days after calving, and one month after calving. And that uh, three days after calving, placenta should be uh, uh, that pleasant, placenta is uh, uh, placenta should be removed from the animals, and seven days after calving, there should be a, uh, that uh, involuting uterus, and one month after calving, uh, involution should be completed, and uh, there should. Uh, one month after calving, that uh, uterus should be completely involuted. And uh, the next one, water treatment plant also, they are for uh, uh, that providing uh, clean water to the animals also helpful to uh, prevent many disease condition. So uh, there are uh, water treatment plants to provide clean water in the NLD farm. You can uh, see this here. This is the water treatment plant. Uh, in Ridhyagam and LDB farm. And also we are using routine food baths uh, for the hoof care. Yeah. These food baths, food baths are important to prevent hoof problems like soft hoof and interdigital dermatitis. Normally copper sulfate food bath by using 5% five, 5 copper sulfate solution. This is, uh, we are doing this once a week, like on every Monday. And uh, formalin food bath by using 2.5 formalin solution. This is once in two weeks. Uh, so then next one is next one, next one is the environmental control. Then uh, for a optimum production and for a healthy cows, there should be uh, that cow should be in their comfort zone without stress. Uh, when a dairy farm is established, there are many things to be considered like environment, feeding, transport, land, etc. And uh, by considering other factors, if we select a place with stressful environment with conditions like high temperature and high humidity, then we should artificially provide a favorable environment to the animals. That, uh, that is called as the environmental control. So uh, if the environmental control is not there, then, then it causes the heat stress in animal. So you can see in this, this is also downloaded from the internet. So uh, you can see here that uh, what happened with the heat stress and uh, uh, then uh, next slide there, this is the uh, temperature humidity index, that means the uh, PHI. So you can see in this line, this is the temperature and this is the humidity. Uh, so uh, if the humidity is high, that is also harmful to the animals. And also the temperature is high, the, the same way it is also harmful to the animals. So we need to uh, control this temperature and humidity by using various methods. And uh, uh, by that, we are keeping the animal in their comfort zone. So this is what we practice in the Ridhyagam and LDB farm. Uh, sprinkler system, you can see here, this is the sprinkler system. This is functioning two minutes in every 16 minutes. And also at the fan system, this is the fan system and the, uh, that outside there is a misting system. Then uh, what happened in uh, there is, uh, we are daily measuring the temperature and humidity and accordingly take actions to control the heat stress that water from the sprinkle system runs over the animal body and wet the body and absorb the heat from the body and evaporate. Then the fans facilitate the evaporation. There should be both fans and sprinkles should be there to take optimum results. That, uh, and also the mist line cool the environment furthermore. And also the post-mortem examination, this is also helpful to uh, disease prevention and control. 
we are doing post mortem in every animal death and uh, this is very important to identify disease condition after identification of the condition we can take pre precautions to prevent further spreading of the disease and uh, as an example if if it if there is any sudden death there will be various causes that uh, like heat stress or heart failure that uh, uh, poisoning high volume shock like that so to the uh, that for the confirmation diagnosis we need to do the post mortem examination and it is a must and then we are also practicing tail trimming and this is also the ridhyagama parlor that we are doing the this is the tail trimmer we use to tail trimming and uh, this prevent external parasitic infection like lice infestations and also mastitis like conditions and the next one is the providing balanced ration this is very important to maintain a good health in animals uh, animals should be provided with the balanced ration according to their status and uh, that feeding management is the separate topic that having that uh, that very uh, that having the, the, that should be talked separately uh, about the feeding management then uh, i am mainly focusing here about the uh, that this is prevention and control so here the next one that uh, now we completed that previously we completed the this is prevention and control part then now i am going to talk about the treatment part then uh, treatment uh, if we follow the disease prevention and control method strictly chance of becoming animal sick is uh, very low but in any case sick animal should be identified as soon as possible so routine health checkups for identify sick animals are there normally at the feeding time and at the milking parlor uh it is very easy to identify the sick animals because in the feeding time if some animal is uh, reluctant to move and if it uh, if if it is not moving for the feeding that uh, we can understand that there is something is there and also at the milking parlor uh, we are uh, checking the animals and it is also uh, helpful to identify the mastitis like conditions and we are doing treatments according to the condition with the antibiotics anti inflammatory anti histamine and support therapy also in the fluid therapy and main thing is we are separating sick, sick animal from other animals and isolate them in the sick pen and uh, milk from the treated cow should be discarded because there, there should be antibiotic there there may be antibiotic residues on the on that milk and withdrawal period of the treatment agents we should be uh, take Uh, that we should also care about that withdrawal period of the treatment agents and uh, for facilitate the treatments there are many various uh, modern methods in the in nlb farms like hoof trimming crushers treatment crushers sort sort gate systems and the headlock systems so uh, there are some i have some photographs of them uh, this is the hoof trimming crush in the ridhyagam nlb farm so uh, by using the this uh, the, this crush is very important to uh, for the hoof trimming uh, procedures and the treatment for treat, uh, treatment for the hoof problems and then the this is the treatment crush or the cow catcher uh, this is also helpful to restrain the animals and uh, for the doing pds and also for the treatment for the animals and then this is the sort gate system in didigam and lb farm by this uh, we can uh, separate animals from that uh, if there is any sick animal or any animal we need to separate we we can give the command from the parlor uh, to separate the, the animal id and uh, uh, separate the animal in the system so uh, from here this gate is opening and that animal is automatically separated and uh, then the next one is the headlock system this is the ridhyagam and lb farm uh, photograph from ridhyagam farm um, this is easily can headlock and restrain uh, animal in the shed in in once we can uh, headlock uh, 170 around 170 animals uh, this is useful in treatments identification of sick animals and vaccination procedures pds also ai Uh, this is very helpful and then uh, 
Next one is uh, that I am then I am talking about treatments to common healthcare problems in a large scale. There is that uh, what we are using the common healthcare problems. There are uh, the types of healthcare problems. There are conditions that can be treated, and also there are conditions that uh, that only can be controlled through the prevention. There is no treatment after the issue happened. So the conditions like that. It, uh, we should follow strict prevention methods. And uh, first of all, uh, this is the uh, mastitis. Uh, mastitis case. This is uh, mastitis is also very important. Prevention is very important. And uh, cleanliness, bedding in lying area, vaccination also, in adjustment of and uh, then management practices like providing feed off just after milking and if it comes to the if it if the animal is uh, sick with mastitis then uh, then need to do the treatment the treatments are uh, following with the severity sometimes it is only using of other infusion and if sometimes it, if we, we have to use other infusion with parental antibiotics and also in some conditions supportive fluid therapy fluid therapy it is needed to according to the severity and sometimes we need to cauterize the other part of the life saving of the animals. Animal and uh, per acute mastitis is a very serious problem. Uh, uh, by by this other necrosis is happen, and this is also with the septicemia. The this is life threatening condition. So you can see this is the uh, actual photograph that taken uh, in uh, one of our farm. So we can see in the first picture it is the bluish colored and the teeth. Then this is the second picture. There's the this other part is totally necrotized, and the last picture that the other part is drop off. And uh, so prevention of mastitis is, is very important uh, to prevent conditions like this. And then uh, next one is labels and hoof problems. This is also prevention is very important. Uh, shed floor design, minimum wetness in the floor, and providing ba balanced ration. Also, treatment is following according to situation, like food block application, copper sulfate or potassium permanganate using. Then also, if it needed antibiotic and anti anti-inflammatory treatments. Then uh, diarrhea and pneumonia condition in uh, cows. This is also a common thing. This this is happen. Uh, sometimes the uh, diarrhea condition happen with the uh, that uh, some malpractices in the uh, milk feeding and uh, also pneumonia condition with the uh, happen with the climatic conditions like that and uh, diarrhea and pneumonia. It is uh, prevention is very important. So we need to follow the. Uh, that uh, milk feeding practices properly, minimum wetness and proper housing system should be there. Uh, after the condition, uh, treatment with the antibiotic and the fluid therapy. And the next one is the uh, navel in and joint heal in the cows. This is also prevention is very important. There that as I talked previously, after care of newborn calf is very important to prevent uh, navel in and joint heal in the cows. And uh, after the condition treatment with antibiotic and inflammatory supportive therapy uh, can be done, but the prognosis is uh, very poor in the situation. And this is the TRP condition. This, this is the actual photo that we taken after a post-mortem in one of our farm. In this condition, uh, the prevention is the very important part because uh, uh, sorry, prevention is very important part because uh, after the condition happened, there is no any treatment. So in this post mortem, uh, hope you can see this is the lung tissue, and uh, this is the spleen, and this is the reticulum, and uh, heart is here. You can see that uh, pericardial uh, pericardium is completely filled with the pus. So the uh, sharp object is punch from here to here, and uh, the, uh, the this is the parvulent effusion in here. So this is the heart that uh, this is the heart, and you can see 
this is the this uh, passes around here and uh, conditions like this uh, is uh, no there's no treatment after this, after this happen so prevention is very important in this condition and the next one is uh, gastrointestinal obstruction with uh, sometimes rock sand and hardened field sometime uh, hair balls in the cows this is also prevention is very important and uh, that prevention means that uh, we need to prevent adding ropes and sand to the feed and by that careful harvesting procedure should be followed and prevent sand and soil mixing with rough edges and also proper calf, calf rearing practices helpful to prevent hair balls and uh, for the minor obstruction drenching of paraffin or lukewarm water may be helpful but uh, for the if, if pylorus obstructions like uh, like obstructions it is uh, prognosis is very poor and most of the time surgical procedures having poor prognosis and uh, in this first picture here uh, you can see the uh, this is the this is a rope that we uh, took uh, that obstructed rope and the next picture this is sand this is the post mortem picture that this is uh, that that animal's ead is obstructed with full this track is obstructed full with sand and uh, the next one is the uh, next condition is rop metritis endometritis like cases this is also uh, prevention is very important and uh, providing balanced ration proper dry cow management postnatal checkups and close observation of fresh cows helpful to uh, prevent the condition and uh, the treatment according to the condition that means that uh, manual removal of placenta sometimes or intra uterine application or parental antibiotics fluid therapy the next one it's a uh, lda and uh, rda cases that means left left displaced abomasum and right displaced abomasum this is also prevention is very important uh, after the condition is happened uh, in rda condition uh, the, that uh, surgery is a must uh, open the abdomen and the and the fix the condition and in the lda conditions uh, toggle fixation can be done and uh, these pictures are related to the uh, rd and lda corrections that we followed in the and ldv farm first picture and second picture is for the rda correction and the uh, third picture is about the to uh, toggle fixation and uh, the next one uh, metabolic diseases it is also prevention is very important and fmd lsd like uh, fast spreading diseases uh, this is uh, this is also prevention is very important difficult to manage it uh, if the condition happened it is difficult to manage with it with the large dairy herd and the uh, next one is the heat stress and uh, the, this should be prevented by the environmental control most of the time sudden death occur and this prognosis is very poor so uh, this photo is related to the heat stress condition in the video farm so you can see here the uh, that first one the nasal bleeding and here the uh, pericardial effusion at the post mortem pericardial effusion and the hemorrhages this is the trachea and all over the body there are uh, we can see the hemorrhages after the, uh, after the uh, at the post mortem and there there are some special cases that uh, we met in my work in time this is the cleft palate of the newborn calf uh, this calf was died uh, within few hours after birth and uh, then the next one uh, once we had the clostridium infection uh, infection the, 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 it had three types of conditions like malignant edema and then ischemic teeth necrosis itn and the brisket edema uh, we overcome these conditions by separate and isolate all the infected cases and daily observation followed strict hygiene method like cleaning at the cleaning at the calving procedures at the milking parlor and also by the supporting treatments uh, as detailed 
description. This is the malignant edema progress from day one to day 20. This is the day one picture. And this is the day three. This is day five. This is day seven. And this is day 20. And uh, this wound was clear, cured after months, but uh, valval area is totally fibrous and there is no rectal opening. So animal was culled and removed from the herd. Uh, so the prevention is very important conditions like this and uh, in the same time we uh, observed that uh, this ITN condition in the milking herd so you can see some this this necrotized necrotized area in the teeth there, this was observed in uh, recently cowed animals uh, recently cowed heifers that means lactation one cows and uh, uh fortunately we also uh that uh, we also overcome with this condition by practicing uh proper uh, hygienic and uh cleaning methods and this is the next one is the brisket edema that this animal was also died within two three days so you can see here this total area is necrotized this is the postmortem finding Okay, then uh, it is about the health care management. And now I'm going to talk about the reproduction management in large scale dairies in Sri Lanka. And normally uh, for the reproduction management, we are using ma uh, many KPIs like uh, conception rate, services for conception, heat detection rate, and also the pregnancy rate. And uh, uh, in uh, by the data system, we can take direct report about this, uh, these parameters. That conception rate is number of pregnant cows over total of services in a given period of a time. And uh, number of services per conception is the services per conception. And uh, heat detection rate is uh, that uh, how many animals that we, from the eligible heat numbers, how many animals we could able to detect the heat. That simply this uh, heat detection rate should be uh, eighty per, uh, should be more than eighty percent, and uh, pregnancy rate is uh, heat detection rate is multiplied by the conception rate, and uh, normally in the reproduction point of view, uh, if And uh, reproduction point of view, uh, animal group in the dairy herd. In the breedable herd, uh, there are red heifers, pregnant heifers, open animals, and to be called animals. In the milking cows, fresh animals, open, bred, pregnant, and to be called animals are there. In the dry cows, ideally, there should be only pregnant cows, but there may be some that with the practical situation they are open bred and to be called animals but these animals should be removed from the herd as soon as possible to uh, take uh, optimum uh, reproduction parameters and then the next one uh, to be called animals should be removed from the herd as soon as possible fresh animals means recently after calving animals and uh, in open animals open means that uh, non-pregnant animals cows and heifers after pd without ai that is the open animals and uh, cows without ai after 45 to 55 days of calving that, that animals also in the uh, open group and heifers without ai after breedable age and weight is reached uh, reached uh, these are the three categories in the open animal herd in the next one uh, we are using uh, that for the reproduction management, artificial insemination by using sex ordered semen, conventional semen, and local available semen, and uh, natural insemination only for the problem breeders. And uh, also, uh, main targets in the reproduction management uh, in the heifers, uh, breeding of the heifers at 14 months of age. Age at first calving should be 44, uh, 24 months and one calf a year from a cow. That means uh, 365 days calving interval. So uh, we should pay strict attention on open animals. Uh, Non-pregnant animals 
that, that they, they, these are the uh, three groups of open animals and we should pay strict attention on these animals because uh, uh, that uh, that animal should be checked and then uh, uh, we can can do insemination after heat detection and also for the open animals we can follow the synchronization programs like uh, OVC program and PG double dose program and also uh, CEDA and uh, these are the protocols of the uh, those programs and then uh, for the heat detection uh, heat detection rate should be uh, more than 80 percent as I said previously uh, for the heat detection what we are doing is observation of the heat signs and we can use tail painting and commercially available heat detectors. Also, there are electronic heat detect detecting devices available in the uh, market. And uh, the next one, normally we are performing uh, pregnancy uh, that what we are doing in the pregnancy diagnosis is uh, per rectal examination by 42 days after uh, AI and uh, ultrasound scanning uh, by 28 to 35 days after uh, AI. In the rectal examination, it, if animal is pregnant, then it's okay. If it is non-pregnant, then uh, we are doing the synchronization program on them. Then by per rectal examination, we can uh, identify abnormalities like endometritis, pyometra cases, mummifications, pseudo pregnancies, and uh, like this uh, reproductive reproductive abnormalities, we can detect it by the rectal examinations. And the next one is, uh, uh, normally where that, where that technology in advance in breeding, like uh, sex ordered semen, and uh, we use sex semen and we, uh, we could able to achieve around 50% of success rate. And uh, now we are using that e European breed uh, A2A2 semen for AI to increase the A2 gene in the genetic pool. And then next one as the last side, slide. This is the challenges in large scale dairy farming of Sri Lanka. Normally uh, initial investment and the risk, uh, risk are very high. And also uh, about the uh, that mindset or in the society that uh, what people are believing is this is a very uh, that hard job and this is very difficult to uh, that continue. And also, uh, like due to lack of uh, human resources, that means lack of experience and knowledge. Also due to some uh, policy changes, like uh, issues of issues in animal culling and selling, and also poor feeding, especially in Sri Lanka, we, we are suffering with unavailability of quality feeding materials. And at the time of importation of them, it is we have to pay a high cost of it uh, for it. And uh, unavailability of machinery, spare parts, and it is also high cost of info importation. And uh, infectious diseases for the diseases, lack of national screening program and preventive mechanism. And uh, these are the challenges in the large scale dairy farming of Sri Lanka. And uh, then, uh, okay, that is the last slide. And thank you. Now it is time for the discussion, I think. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Randi, for nice, uh, informative, and elaborative presentation. I think you have covered. Uh, most of the aspects of uh, the health and reproduction of uh, large scale dairy farms in the country. Uh, since we have now got about uh, one hour, uh, we'll have another 10 to 15 minutes for discussion. So if uh, any of you in the audience have a, a question or clarification, then uh, this is time. So thanks. Dr. Randi, thank, uh, thank you very much for your very nice presentation. My, uh, my, uh, I have one question. Uh, 
Dr. Virasinga, that is uh, in a, in a uh, large scale dairy farm, how does that cow come uh, become a heat stress? Is there any reason for that? Yeah, that uh, that uh, that I am talking about the Ridiagam NLDB farm, Doctor. That Ridiagam is uh, that that uh, that environment is uh, very hot, and uh, the humidity is also high. So that I am not talking about the upcountry farms. That the the farms are okay, but in the Ridiagam there is a problem with the heat stress because the temperature and the humidity. So ne we need to uh, follow the strict uh, environmental control measures to prevent that heat stress. So uh, th th that's what I said about the heat stress, that only in the Ridiagama farm, because that uh, that situa situation that, that where is the farm located, it is the problem uh, with, the, with that, that only. Yeah, so we have to take uh... Preventive measures to prevent uh, yeah. heat stress, huh? Yeah. Thank you. Doctor Arundhi, Doctor Dilani here. Yes, doctor. Yeah, uh, actually, I I raised that point in the chat box also. Uh, regarding this uh, Ridiga farm, you have told that you practice this misting, right? Currently, yeah. misting and. Uh, but they are open houses, right? Misting and uh, the, there are fans that you are taking yeah. out the. So, uh, and also now, as you said, uh, uh, the Ridigama area, you have high RH and uh, high, I mean, climate temperature is also high. So, yeah. the, I have a point that if you put the mist on the animals, so what No, no, happening? that is not on the animals, uh, sir. It is okay. the only for the that, that misting is using only for the purpose of cooling the environment. It is not uh, that we are not putting the mist on the animals. We okay. only the sprinkle system is to the animals. Misting okay. line so, is going. Uh, yeah, yeah. So when, when you put that uh, mist uh, to the environment, right? So that yeah. it will also in, increase the RH again because the, the environment uh, RH will be increased by this misting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the then uh, we, we then when you have high RH in the environment, the evaporation is suppressed. Yeah. And so, in so, order to avoid that, we need to have high air velocity inside the house. Yeah. So I think it has not been properly, uh, you know, designed there. Uh, this Dr. Is Dr. My, my perspective, actually. Uh, Dr. Dilan and Dr. Arundi, uh, can I... Uh, Join with the discussion. I am this Nagar, Dr. Dishnagar. Sure, sure, Dr. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Dr. Dilan, that uh, Ridhyagama environment uh, is that uh, the RH is high during the night time. And mm. the, the, uh, at around 1 o'clock in the afternoon, it comes down up to 50 to 55. Mm -hmm. So so that period, the environment, that the environment I mean that air yeah, is very hot. So during that uh, hot hours, if you spray mist uh, to the environment that that environment that air get cooled down okay that, as a effect of that animals are not getting stressed once the okay. animals are stressed it's very difficult to cool down with the sprinkles and uh, fans the earlier one earlier practice was misting sorry uh, the sprinkles along mm -hmm. the feed area mm -hmm. uh, the animals are sprayed water to the body that mm -hmm. is there and fans are running on the shed or the uh, I mean, a, a continuous airflow on the animals so then that that evaporative cooling is there but misting is done during the peak hours i mean hot hours to prevent the uh, animals getting stressed that by cooling down the environment heat environment. yeah that's the idea and it had a good results as well. So it was uh, introduced you, later. Yeah, so it has now the, the latest introduction has the positive impact on the milk yield. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, not only on the milk yield, but on mm -hmm. the reproductive the uh, achievements, yeah, reproductive performance as well. Uh -huh. Yeah, that is to cool down the environment heat, then animals are not getting stressed. So that was the idea and it works at, it worked that as well, yeah. Okay, that's not right. 
so i i think dr disnak and arun they uh, they are for you are practicing that part specifically during some hours of the day yeah not in yes in the day time misting is only in the day time not in the night okay thank you any other questions dr virasen has some questions are in the chat box i think uh, those are also related to this misting i have read there are no other uh, one is uh, this we could uh, one is there is that effective or can get enough immunity level of vaccinating against lsd nld nlde farms only without vaccinating animals around the farm that is the another question apart from that misting can you explain that yeah that i think it is ask about the lsd vaccination vaccination in our farms uh, that uh, in the 2021 we reported some cases of lsd and after that we started the lsd vaccination and we we could effectively control and prevent the lsc condition in our farms that that this question is related to that without uh, vaccinate vaccinating in the uh, that animals around the farm it, is it effective to vaccinate in only the nldb farms uh, anyway that as my experience uh, we were able to uh, control the uh, situation in our farms by vaccinating Okay. Any other question? Okay. Uh, since uh, it looks like uh, we don't have any other question, thank you very much again. Okay. There's uh, something. Okay. So thank you very much again, Dr. Arundi, for a nice presentation. And uh, again, thank you very much for the audience colleagues also for participating. Uh, with that, uh, I would like to hand over this uh, floor to Dr. Chamari Kannangara, uh, Secretary of the SLVA. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Veera Singh. Uh, on behalf of Sri Lanka Veterinary Association, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Arundhi Ranapana for accepting our invitation and conducting today's webinar. Dr. Arundhi, it was very informative uh, presentation. I hope all of you must have gained a good knowledge about uh, large-scale dairy farming, especially about the operations of uh, uh, dairy uh, farming in NLDB farms. So it was nice presentation with very colorful pictures, actually uh, practically uh, the uh, true pictures which you have taken from NLDB farm. So again, thank you, uh, Dr. Irandi for uh, being with us here today and uh, doing this nice presentation. Next, uh, I would like to thank our moderator today, Dr. Tilak Veerasingha. Uh, thank you, Dr. Veerasingha, for accepting our invitation to be the moderator today and conducting our webinar. Uh, and I hope uh, uh, all of our members gain good knowledge, even from your uh, point of view, what you have explained also. So th thank you very much, Dr. Veerasingha. And next, uh, I would like to thank our president, uh, Dr. Susanta Malavarachi, and all the executive committee members who joined today, and also the exec for their uh, continuous support uh, towards uh, uh, organizing this uh, webinar series. Thank you very much, Mr. President, and all the exco members. And next, I like to thank uh, all our audience, uh, those who have joined from Sri Lanka, as well as the veterinarians who have joined from other countries, uh, especially the veterinarians who have joined from India. Thank you very much for being here with us today. 
and i hope uh, uh, all of you have received a very good knowledge about uh, large scale dairies in sri lanka from today's webinar uh, our next webinar will be held on next friday uh, 27th friday uh, may at 1 o'clock and the topic will be prevention and management of common swine diseases in sri lanka uh, the speaker for the next uh, webinar is dr samira premaratna so i invite all of you to join our next webinar that is next friday at 1 o'clock sri lanka time and also those who have missed the webinar today they can later watch this webinar by uh, 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 by logging into our youtube uh, channel or joining our facebook page so uh, thank you very much and have a nice uh, evening thank you